The problem, he refers to, was the famine of the 1990s. Pictures smuggled out of the north at the time show the horror of the disaster, which, aid agencies claim, killed up to two million people. <coughs> Over ten years on, the World Food Programme is still feeding people here because the country can't produce enough food and the daily government rations are not enough. From our van, we could see shop fronts and stalls and long queues. Were these the government ration distribution points? Or were they the private markets which people who have money depend on to survive? Again, we weren't allowed to stop. The private markets are an embarrassment to the communist government, and anyone who appears to be returning from them, loaded with shopping, is shooed away from in front of the camera like this woman with her trolley. What's the matter with him? And a man with a bag on his bike. It's as if shopping for food is a state secret. Whenever I asked to go to the market, I got the same response. There's no market, there's no market here. The market is not open at this hour. I just want to get a glimpse into how people in this country live. We were beginning to attract hostile attention, and so we returned to the official program. Days spent visiting factories, and evenings at the theater, where I sat alongside equally bored-looking generals, watching a ballet about the triumphant building of a hydroelectric dam. I was getting desperate. Mr. John, mm. we've only got one day left here. Please, can we go to the market? Yes, but you can have a look around, but you can't make any moves. I could go to the market, but not with a camera. The market was bustling with activity, and the counters loaded with local produce vegetables and meat, and from China, electrical goods, fans, cooking utensils, clothes, shoes, bags, the lot. But it's private enterprise, and the government doesn't like it. In the future, when socialism is completely victorious, these markets will disappear. For now, we will make no effort to encourage them or increase their number, and ultimately, they must disappear. We were plunged into another of the country's many power cuts while Mr. Rhee explained how the planned economy could meet all the people's needs. Just as he completed his speech, the power came on again. But it clearly isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> but you have power shortages. The United Nations agencies say that a third of your people are not receiving a proper diet. <laughs> Even though the economic strength of our country might be judged by the availability of food and other commodities, you should look at the foundations. Our economic power has reached a new high level in terms of advanced technology, including information technology. I asked to visit an example of this advanced information technology and was taken to the Pyongyang University e-library and introduced to North Korea's internal intranet. How do you access the World Wide Web? What internet providers, what search engines do you use? I can't directly. Ordinary people here are forbidden access to the internet. The dear leader has arranged for all that they need to know to be put on a closed system. You know what the hand grenade is, don't you? Yes, I know. It was, the hand grenade was just going to blow up, but... The spoken English among university students is very good. How do they do it? Uh, thanks to the great leader, Master Kim Jong-il, we can see British films and even American films, uh, even though the America is our enemy. For example, the sound of music. <laughs> you mentioned um, your great leader, yes. um, and we have heard a lot about him while we have been here in Korea. What other world leaders do you, do, do you admire? Mm, I also know many other leaders, such as Stalin and Mao Zedong in China. 
Stalin, Mao, you can be forgiven for asking what century they think they're living in. I came across graduates who hadn't heard of Nelson Mandela, let alone Google. But then, if you're not told, how would you know? At school, children are taught to sing a song that tells them that they have nothing to envy in the outside world and that they are the happiest people on earth. A kindergarten with its own indoor fairground. For more than a week in North Korea, they invited us to indulge in the fantasy. I think what surprised me most here was that they could believe that we would believe that what they showed us was for real. night I go to South Korea to find out what is really happening in the north by talking to defectors who have recently fled. There are hundreds of street children, homeless children, just living and dying on the streets. If you rebel, it would not only result in your death, but your family will be punished. Because the risk is so great, not many people try. Sue Lloyd Roberts, just time to measure